Hey everybody, welcome back once again to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. Hope you enjoy the music. And uh, maybe it's something that I'll try from here on out. As much as I'd love to just do something that somebody writes in, uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. And I've gotten quite a few subscribers, far more than I expected, and far more than my other channel, which is a little sad because my other channel takes time and effort to uh, put that stuff out, but that's okay. I'm glad everybody's here, and I'm glad people are enjoying it. It's striking a chord with people. That's awesome. But in any case, I just really felt like this needed some music, so here it is. I hope it doesn't clash too much with me yakking along. So we're gonna uh, start and end in the year 1368, which is a busy, busy year. Let's start out talking about masquerades. As usual, I am enjoying the stuff that Novak and Grubb have to put out. I just, I just find it enjoyable to read. This one <sighs> took, a, took a little bit longer uh, than some of the others, I think, possibly because it just felt like, as much as I enjoyed the adventure with Alias and Dragonbait here in the city whose name is totally blanking on me now, um, uh, it's, it's the city that she was supposedly born in, I should know it, but uh, it, it just felt... I don't know, it felt a little Saturday morning cartoonish, much like a lot of Salvatore's earlier stuff felt, so it felt like a step down, but still a lot of good writing. Let me grab you a couple of quotes here. You look the way I must have the first time I saw Dragon Bait, Alias said. Oh, and this is her talking to like their eight or nine year old serving girl at the hotel they're staying in. I was so frightened I threw a dagger at him. Fortunately, I missed. What did he do? Mercy asked. Well, he dropped the puppy he'd just rescued and ran off. Do you like puppies? The girl asked Dragonbait in astonishment. The Soriel nodded solemnly. So just imagine a Soriel nodding solemnly about puppies. <laughs> I just, I really enjoyed that bit and it just shows what an easy time these guys have with dialogue, with interactions, things like that. Uh, the other quotes that I have aren't really quotes so much to show off writing but to show off what I thought was me being brilliant. Here, let me just uh, read them to you real fast. So in this city uh, that they're in, which is kind of a rundown city where the bad guys pretty much run everything, it's kind of a westernish sort of tale. Uh, there's this, uh, there are these night masks, and they're you know the criminal element in this city, and they're ruled by the faceless. And the faceless, some think he's a myth, some think he's you know whatever, but supposedly he runs the night masks with um, this magic that conceals his or her face. So there's this section where. The Faceless is talking to his minions. I do, the Faceless replied, drumming his fingers on the arm of his chair in irritation. Now, I was convinced that the Faceless was, in fact, this wizard um, who was helping out Alias and Dragonbait throughout this entire adventure. There were a couple of things early on, like the fact that he's obsessed with death, and, and, and I guess this was meant to be a red herring or whatever, but I really, really thought this was the case. There's a later point where he drummed his fingers impatiently on the tabletop, and that's uh, attributed to that wizard. So it was because of that that I thought, oh, oh, you know, they're doing these really subtle things to clue you in, um, to show you that this guy really is the faceless, because the person who it's kind of obvious is the faceless, I was like, well, that's too obvious. They're not going to go that route, because that would be boring. And of course, that's the route they go, and it's boring. Um, Sorry guys, like that reveal and everything that comes after is kind of dull, but it's um but it's still well written and I cared enough about the characters that I kept on and they do this uh fake out uh, two thirds of the way through that because they're better writers than this, I totally believe that they went for it. They do this thing where Alias and Dragonbait supposedly die off screen. And I was really shocked by it, but it goes to all of, and you know, we've had uh, the uh, Wyvern Spur book where Alias and Dragonbait aren't even there, so it really feels as if they might possibly pull something like that. You know, this series feels as if like, look, Alias and Dragonbait are kind of the big heroes, but they don't necessarily have to be there for, uh, for the series to continue or for the world to continue for that matter. In the grand scheme of things, they are small. Finder is now big, which is insane, but because he went and uh, destroyed Moander and took his power, he's now a god. But Alias and Dragonbait are just heroes. Penny heroes, or whatever they're called in this. But of course it's a fake out, and they're fine, and da 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 and pretty quickly you realize where Alias is at least, though uh, Dragonbait took me a little longer to figure out. 
Dragon Bait totally steals the show in this book, by the way, from uh, little things like that, like him nodding solemnly at the puppies line, to him being really excited that the uh, the plays that one of the other main characters is putting on in defiance of the rulers. Uh, she starts including Alias and in her heroics, and then when Dragon Bait gets put into the plays, he's really proud of that and all excited. And it's just little things like that that make this book pop, beyond the plot itself being kind of run-of-the-mill, I guess. So, mixed feelings about this book, but still, I dug it overall and I read all the way through. So now comes a point for any of you who think I'm a little odd for liking Philip Athens so much, who maybe didn't read the Watercourse stuff, but um, have read his Baldur's Gate novelization. I'm guessing there are some of you out there who are like, what the hell is wrong with this dude because you've read that? And, uh, you know, hey, I'll eat humble pie if I have to, because I gotta admit, Baldur's Gate was absolutely horrible. I haven't played the game. Uh, you know, obviously I've heard great, great, great things about it, but I haven't played the game. I went and just, uh, to see if it seemed to match up at all, I went and YouTubed a few videos where people have, uh, taken just the, um, the animata, anim not animatics, the, uh, the in-between, the, the movies, essentially, from it, and put those together, just so I could see if it matched up at all, and it looks like Sevadrock or whatever is the main villain in it, but I have no idea beyond that, um, how much he drew on the, uh, the game. So here's what I imagine. <laughs> I picture, like, them coming to Philip Athens and being like, oh man, you gotta check out this game that they're making for us. It's so awesome. Like, it's really fun to play. And Phil's like, okay, cool. And he takes it home and he's playing it, playing it, playing it for like three weeks. And then they call and they're like, so how's the novel coming? And he's like, wait, what? And uh, they're like, uh, yeah, you know, the, the the novel based on the game. Like, uh, did you uh, did you get it finished yet? And he's like, w what are you talking about? And they're like, dude, the novel is due in three days. Come on. And he's like, shit <laughs> so he just starts banging out whatever the hell he can he hasn't played the whole game he hasn't thought at all about novelizing this he just throws out something and he's like i know it's only like 240 pages but please for the love of god just publish it and they're like well okay nobody's gonna care anyway this is the only scenario i can i can imagine that, that makes this make any sense because oh my god is this book bad like uh let's see abdel the main character doesn't have much characterization for one thing so so calling it char uh, his character is kind of being lenient on on my end let me read you the one quote that i marked in here just because any other man on the face of Toral might have at least hesitated before jumping into an open grave with two reeking putrescent flesh gorged ghouls abdel not only didn't hesitate but grew frustrated with the unhurried pull of gravity on the way down <laughs> This marks the one thing I know about Abdel. He is angry! <laughs> he is really angry and likes hitting things. Now, this is because, spoiler, he is the son of Baal, the lord of murder, so he's got bloodlust. Um, this, what's interesting is, like, Abdel actually works better as a kind of conflicted character than uh, I think Aaron did in Shadowstone, but mostly because like his reasons for being good is he kind of wants to bang a paladin so that to me seemed more believable because it's like i'm the lord of murder and god i just want to destroy things but sexy lady so it, it <laughs> i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that i found that more believable but i did yeah it's 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 trash it's it's terrible it's not good at all and it's uh frustrating because i don't know i and i kept i i read the whole thing i know my like zero tolerance policy uh just kind of went out the window with this but i kept reading because i thought i'm just not getting something you know there's there's something here that i don't get and it's gonna all make sense at one point and it'll be brilliant and by the end, and like literally the ending is like him stabbing his sword in his Evadrox face. That's like the last line. And it's like the end. Done. And uh, it almost feels as if they went back and put in as an afterthought, like the chick that had died and she comes back to life, but not anywhere near the hero. And he doesn't know about it at the end. Um, it almost feels as if they put in that little section where she comes back to life as like, oh crap, we totally forgot to like give this resolution. It's the other fun thing, talking of her dying, <laughs> everybody Abdel knows dies horribly throughout this book. Uh, one of them, that chick, gets brought back to life at the end, but most of them just die horribly and are 
forgotten very quickly. You don't want to be friends with this dude. That's really the moral of the story. And, and like, there are some fun bits. Like, the way that uh, Athens writes the uh, flesh-rotting zombie who's maybe possibly trying to help and maybe possibly trying to kill them, depending on the chapter, is is interesting. Like, it's, it's really well done. Like, uh, you really feel sickened by this creature. It's not just a lot of, like, you know, the rotting putrescent stench and blah, 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 which is the usual way that people write undead and uh, obviously boring. I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to do, but he really, like, the maggots coming out of this dude's gums while he talks? Like, seriously, like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, so it's, uh... It's bad. Stay away from it unless, I mean, just for comedic purposes, because it's a quick read. And it's so bad, it's funny. But I would love to hear the story of that someday, because I'm sure that there is one. Right on after that, we get to Baldur's Gate 2, Throne of Ball, which is weird, because that's really, like, the third Baldur's Gate that come, came out. And, like, reading it, the first bit talks about all the stuff that's happened to Abdel and whatever her name is since the end of Baldur's Gate which really makes it feel like this should have been the third book as it was released rather than something wedged in between but it was so bad that i just gave up on it pretty quickly so i don't know if there's a reason why this is cataloged as it is on my reference page or if this is a miscategorization for some reason but in any case the third one to be released in our chronology like human years uh is bad second one to be possibly in, in their chronology. I don't know. I, I like I don't know if it like flashes back at some point or what, but in any case, it was really bad. Um, like even worse than the first one. Or it, I, I wouldn't go that far. Just it's like they aren't doing anything new here. So skipped that one. Also skipped Thornhold. Got a little ways into it, but like if this tells you anything, I got around to recording this and I saw it on the list and I'm like, really? Did I read that? And I had to read like five or ten pages again before I was like, oh right, it's this one. It, it, there wasn't anything really horrible about it, it just didn't pull me in. I mean, it's kind of the typical Cunningham sort of stuff in that it, it just, like, I like Blackstaff, <laughs> I find him amusing, but that's about it. Um, it's weird because Elf Song I liked so much, but so many of these others just aren't doing it for me, and I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, I, uh, um, I might be becoming a little bit jaded here. I was planning on taking a fairly large break once I hit third edition. Like, I figured that would be a good stopping point for a variety of reasons, one of which is I'm getting a little burned out, and uh, perhaps Cunningham stuff is suffering because of that, much like the next one, Symbol's Gift by Lynn Abbey. I didn't really like Abbey's stuff much in the Dark Sun world, um, and also didn't really care for this. I stuck with it for like a third of the book simply because uh, Lynn keeps jumping from character to character, uh, so much so that I kept feeling like, well, okay, now I'm not bored. You know how, like, some books, like, a lot of people have complained about the Robert Jordan books, like, you know, by book three or four, all they cared about was Matt, so it'd be like, they'd read a little bit about Matt and get really excited, and then they'd have to sift through, like, 70 pages of Elaine and crap. For me, this was kind of the opposite. It was like, well, this is really boring and I'm just gonna give up on it. Oh, new characters. Okay, I'll keep on for a little bit longer. No, they're really boring and I should just give up. Oh, hey, new characters. Over and over and over again. So, um, not really a glowing recommendation for the book. And as I say, I did eventually give it up because it just felt like nothing was going anywhere and I didn't care about the main plot, which becomes the main plot after a while. Like, bro and his little sister and, like, they're all after a horse. Yeah, that just, I, who cares? Um, and, like, if Lynn said, like, the Chesa'in, or whatever the hell the wild elves' name is, like, thought of things this way one more time. I was about ready to stab them in the face because I just, I did not care. Gets thrown in our face repeatedly, and I'm like, is this a frickin' resource book for the Chesa'in, or whatever the hell they're called? Ugh. Drove me insane. So, uh, yeah, it's been a while. I've taken a bit of a break. That's why I'm getting a little burned out. I'm hoping to at least make it to third edition before really, really, like, taking a much longer break. We'll see how that goes. Can't promise anything, but I'm glad you're all out there with me. Uh, I would love to hear feedback, as always. Um, kind of makes my day. So let me know what you think. Let me know what your take on any of these books are. Whatever. I'm easy like a Sunday morning. This is Michael D. Bradley, and this has been Realms Remembered.